what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel my name is Murph and it's been a hot minute uh, I took about a month month and a half off for my own uh, kind of mental health had to take a break I was overworked overtasked not in a good place um, and also I was getting tired of trying to make content on a game that didn't have too much content going in it but we're back um, fortunately for a week at least I'll be gone on a work trip for three weeks starting next week so I'm gonna try to figure out how I can make videos and do content over that time uh, but we're back with Lord of the Rings, Heroes of Middle-Earth. We have not stopped playing the game. We're still playing religiously. I still love this game. We finally have a lot of content to cover. Um, starting with today, there actually was a Reddit AMA and Ask Me Anything from the game developers of Heroes of Middle-Earth. Uh, essentially, they posted on Reddit and told everybody, hey, if you guys have questions, we've got everybody from game designers, design directors, uh, or game directors, design directors, producers, uh, creator of musical parodies, interesting uh, it's a brand uh, and a community lead um, to basically go through and just answer a bunch of questions so what I wanted to do is kind of go through and talk through some of the, the the key things that were mentioned during this and kind of what it means for the game and what we can do to prepare for it going forward so without further ado um, the first one is about the current in-game economy uh, any plans to reach us gold and or XPs personally I'm not a fan of asking this kind of stuff during AMAs uh, this is a gotcha game it's a mobile game Every single one of them has these kind of resource restrictions in them in order to basically incentivize whales and people to spend money to break past them and also to keep dangling the carrot in front of you to keep going along. And in my honest opinion, if you aren't a fan of this kind of game, then you shouldn't be playing this in the first place. Um, it's kind of those like, what did you think you were getting sort of thing. So I, I don't want to start the video off negative, but I really don't try to put too much thought into this kind of stuff. Um, one thing that's kind of been spitballed around the community is light side large units. So as of right now, we have, I think, only two dark side or two shadow uh, large units, and it's uh, Ironhide and the Brute Troll. Uh, and essentially, you can have one large character per team, and that's it. There's no light side characters out yet. People are kind of hypothesizing, well, we'll probably get Ents, but then as far as light side characters go in Tolkien's universe, what else could that even be? Like, could it be mounted units, potentially? Could it be... Uh, something that's not physically large, but larger in power, like the Maiar, like the Wizards, uh, or Tom Bombadil, or something like that, right? But as far as, like, the light side characters go, maybe the Eagles, uh, there's there's not a lot out there uh, for them to pull from. So, it's, you know, someone asked, uh, could we get Theoden as a mounted unit? That'd be cool. That's something that's been kind of talked about. They basically, too long, didn't read, no, uh, we're not doing mounted units uh, for light side large characters. Uh, tool for squad management. They basically said there's already something in the game for it. Uh, this one was big. Uh, can we get a tease on who the next legendary character will be and what squad will be required for unlock? Uh, they said we can confirm there will be another legendary coming before the end of the year. As for a hint, I'll just say that it's a character from The Hobbit. Now, uh, this is all speculative and I don't like making a lot of speculative content. Um, I love discussing speculation in Discord with my guildmates and everybody else. Um, cause it's pretty fun to kind of try to guess what, what the next big thing is. I don't like making content on speculative things because people spend money on these games. And regardless, if you know what you're talking about, or you don't know what you're talking about, if you make content, uh, that speculates on games like this, people will take that as gospel and spend money on it. So don't spend money on this, uh, unless you want to, whatever, do your thing, but I'm not encouraging you to spend money on this, but I think what it is, we're talking about legendary characters in the Hobbit. There's really only one character that comes to mind for me, and it's Thorin, the leader of Thorin's company of the 13 dwarves that goes to retake Erebor. Um, really, the story of The Hobbit in and of itself, it's its less a story about Bilbo and more a story about Thorin, in my opinion. Like, yes, Bilbo is the main character, but you're following the actual plot and character arc of Thorin and the dwarves as they reclaim their homeland. Uh, Bilbo was just kind of added in there uh, for perspective. Now... The reason I'm assuming it's him and not, uh, there's, there's a second option that I think it might potentially be, and that might be Azog the Defiler. And now Azog, we kind of have to delineate this because the game itself, Heroes of Middle Earth, they've stated it's supposed to be based off of the books that Tolkien wrote and not the Peter Jackson movies specifically. And this gets important when talking about Azog because in the movies, of the Hobbit, Azog is the main bad guy. He leads all the orc armies. He's the one that has a grudge against Thorin and he's out to get them and whatever, right? He's the big bad of the Hobbit movies. In the books, 
uh, Azog actually dies earlier on in the story before the events of The Hobbit, and his son Bolg, who we have in game, the Misty Mountain Orc Lee that is from the Challenge Store, is the one that actually leads the Orc forces in the Battle of the Five Armies at the end of The Hobbit. Um, and I think that was kind of a stretch, but I think it's possible that that could be what we're looking at uh, for potentially a Shadow Legendary unit. Um, but really, I, my, my favorite theory to go with is Occam's Razor, right? The answer is the most obvious one right in front of you. It should be Thorin, and if it's going to be Thorin, I think it's safe to assume that we're probably going to need five dwarves in order to unlock him. It'll follow the same style of Legendary Unlock as Elrond. You'll need five dwarves at five stars in order to unlock Thorin. So again, this is speculation, but I think that's what this is getting at. So uh, if ever there was a reason for you to start farming dwarves, that's it. Uh, and here's the thing. If you're free to play, the best way to play the meta is to jump the meta. So whereas people are going to be throwing money at things and they don't have to care about what they're farming at the time because they can just buy it, as free to play, if you don't get Elrond the first time around, you're stuck waiting months until he comes back around while everybody else is climbing an arena, they're getting more raid points than you, and their accounts are exponentially building faster than yours. So in order to keep you from having to spend money to unlock characters, sometimes the best strategy is to take the jump on something speculative like this and start farming out your dwarves so you can get Thorin early on and not have to wait six months from now to be able to unlock him. Next up, uh, we got a question about the supply characters. So there are certain characters in the game, uh, Eldred, Goblin King, and Gruhur, who from the day one release of the game have been restricted to only being in the supply store, uh, purchasable by crystals. So you can purchase their shards for crystals, uh, which is the you know the in-game monetization currency. And that's the only way you can farm them. There's no character nodes, no other supply stores or free-to-play ways to buy them. Uh, and what they're asking is essentially, you know, all these other characters as they're being added in in Marquee Adventures, uh, there's a cadence where they get they, they have their adventure release and then they get added to the supply store for crystals and then they eventually become free-to-play farmable. Question is, when will these three characters who've always been crystal farmable be moved to farmable nodes? Um, they actually, they misanswered this one with a question that I asked them on Reddit. Uh, but the answer was down here um, where... We're always considering which character should remain in the supplies, and these characters are top of mind. We've heard the suggestions and feedback over the past while, and we are working them into our plans, so they're definitely under consideration for the short and near term. Uh, so what it sounds like is essentially they will be going free-to-play farmable, but there's no indication of when, so do with that information what you will. Uh, when will softlock issue and multiple game modes be addressed? Uh, they're heard and noted, essentially, is the answer for that one. When will Elrond be re-released? This is the million dollar question for the majority of the fan base and player base that has not unlocked Elrond yet. Um, they said two things to keep an eye out for before the end of the year is when Elrond will be released, which means we've got October, November, December. We got three potential months that it could be unlocked. Um, I, I would assume it's probably gonna be sooner rather than later, but there's no telling when. Um, they also said there will be a re-release for the Marquis for Arwen and Elodin. So if you missed out on them the first or second time for Arwen, make sure you hop out and grab them again. Um, there's going to be a news update coming with notes later this week. So keep an eye out for that, and I'll keep you posted. Um, this was a question that I asked. Can we get some more transparency on Marquis Farmable release timelines? Because I've personally been tracking a lot of these uh, release cadences just to try to figure out what the actual cadence is. Because everybody's assuming it's going to be the same thing as Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And so far, it looks like it is close to that same cadence, but we've had two characters go farmable out of like 15 total characters added to the game. There's not enough data to make sure, like, to draw that conclusion from that. Um, and essentially, what they said is they're still working on the actual process for it. Uh, we're still working out our cadences and haven't locked down a tried and true timeline yet. So there it is. Uh, shadow characters when? After October, it'll be 11 light and two shadow marquees. Uh, they said, great question. They have been heavily focused on light characters in the time since launch. Introducing more shadow characters is important to us. And I'll simply say, get ready because we have some really exciting shadow characters coming before the end of the year. Spooky season is the best season. So it sounds like this month we're going to be getting these two uh, made up. Well, maybe they're made up. I don't remember if they said they were made up or not. But these two Merkwood characters um, that are not Merkwood. I'm sorry. Lorien characters that are supposed to be the brothers of Haldir, the Ranger of Lorien. Uh, and they will be accompanying a... Balin character, but like an alternate universe, alternate timeline Balin they're releasing where Balin never died in Moria. Sweet. Um, I'm assuming with Spooky Season, these characters are going to be released probably late October, early November. Um, 
with you know Halloween and then it being the next month's iteration of characters because each month they're doing two to three characters added in. Uh, this is another random question I asked, just how many different eras of Tolkien do they actually have access to? Because the Tolkien estate is kind of weird with IP, like Rings of Power, they gave them access to like um, second age material, but not first age material. So they couldn't do the Silmarillion. So they had to basically pull like appendices from Lord of the Rings to pull lore for season two, but then disregard the lore for season two. But I'm not here to shit on Rings of Power. Uh, they basically said they have... Um, they have rights to characters from The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, and the appendices of Lord of the Rings. So that's what we got. Nothing from Silmarillion, nothing from like, you know, the letters or more expanded works like Children of Hurin or anything else like that. Uh, max speed, I'm not gonna go through this. This is a lot of information on mods. Essentially, the big takeaway here is that mod or glyphs are gonna be the same thing as mods in Galaxy of Heroes. Um, they're gonna max out at 90 speed per unit, so per character on a perfectly rolled set of glyphs. Um, they're working on a way to export raid scores and or track them better within the raid system. Uh, Sam's Adventure story driven. They basically said, yeah, Sam's Adventure was kind of a love letter to Lord of the Rings that they did. And the amount of time and effort that went into that adventure, they don't foresee them doing another one similar to that anytime soon. Um, Gandalf Shard, so inaccessible. A dumb question, in my opinion, not a fan of it. It's Gandalf shards are inaccessible because they have to make a raid that lasts a long time throughout the lifespan of the game so that you can still grow your account and progress through it and be able to eventually unlock it. If they made Gandalf farmable week one, we'd be sitting here with a raid that was on farm for the next year until they came up with something else. So uh, just keep working on your teams. Keep uh, encouraging your guilds to do better and to score more points, and you will eventually get to Gandalf shards very quickly. Uh, more PvE content added to the game. Uh, they said they're going to be a little PvP heavy in the future, but their goal is to try to open up space with events like this in the somewhat near future. Uh, I asked another question about how many different legendary adventure ideas and characters are floating around, and if they kind of intend on adopting the Journey and Galactic Legend style characters from Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes for some of the more bigger characters in the Tolkien uh, Legendarium. Uh, and they basically said... Uh, we have 40 plus ideas for adventures that are either legendary or similar to them. And as they mentioned in the past, legendary adventures have a faction requirement and need five characters progressed. They're planning to eventually have other types of adventures that tell nostalgic stories and as a result require more specific characters. So that's your journeys and your galactic legends. So they are doing it, uh, but that is far into the future. Um, we have thoughts as to who will be our most powerful characters, but that is many years into the future. Um, other questions here more glyph questions uh this is a big one will glyphs have their own energy type or use guild or normal energy glyphs will be earned through light shadow campaigns as well as for opportunities in the supply so it sounds like they're taking the uh the mod store from star wars galaxy and heroes copy pasting that into a glyph store uh which is fine for those who have excess resources but as of right now in the game we don't have a lot of excess resources to be able to essentially dump into a glyph store like that and I'm a little worried with this because if we're keeping glyphs in the light and shadow campaigns, there's two different ways I really see it working out. Um, one would be essentially glyphs are assigned to random nodes. So as you're farming your Elodin shards or your shadow and light crystals or whatever your target farming, uh, they'll have a chance to drop specific types of glyphs um, on those nodes, which is cool because that's kind of a passive way to automatically farm them up. Um, on the flip side, what's bad about that is that you're using the same resource, your campaign energy, uh, to farm character shards, to farm crystals, to farm, uh, and by crystals I mean like light and shadow crystals, uh, to farm other gear pieces, and now to farm glyphs specifically. Um, and that's not great. We don't have enough energy to go around to do that. I'm already struggling to support both farming character shards and gear at the same time. Um, to the point where I'm really just farming character shards for 90% of my energy output and then usually only spending energy on gear when I'm like maybe one or two unique pieces away from finishing a gear piece off. Um, so I'm not too stoked about that. But uh, that is really the majority of the questions I wanted to get through here. Um, the majority of the kind of more upvoted, more popular questions. So if you guys enjoy the, the video, there's more to come in the future. There might be a slight delay in the next couple of weeks, but I will be coming out to more regularly scheduled content. So uh, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Drop a comment down below. Let me know, uh, was there anything in the AMA that you specifically liked or enjoyed or any good information that you found out of it? 
Um, like the video, it helped the algorithm out, and I'll catch you guys next time.